piggybacking on the back of the purpose of the First Amendment that was offered with respect to the border, and it is that the very policies that have been promoted and that are currently actively being promoted by the Democratic Party are endangering the American people, and by the way, endangering the migrants, that my co colleagues on the other side of the aisle are wrongfully saying that somehow there'd be South Texans wanting to line up to shoot, which defies all of the logic of all of the things that I know the gentlelady lady from Texas knows about the ranchers in South Texas who are heartbroken about the dead bodies they're finding on the ranches the mobile morgues in Brooks County, Texas. Currently 48 dead migrants, I think probably more. That was a two week old number, 107 last year. Like, that's the reality of South Texas. These, these ranchers are heartbroken to find a dead body on their ranch. The vast majority of the people living in South Texas are people who are Hispanic. They're, the uh, white owners of branches and white people in the South Texas are in the minority. This is not about targeting uh, migrants. Uh, so, and, some, and, and the insinuation that that's the case is absurd. The fact of the matter is, a lot of ranchers do, in fact, have AR-style rifles. A lot of ranchers have uh, they desire to be able to defend their, their families on their ranches and concerned about danger. I've got picture after picture of guns that have been confiscated from migrants that have been uh, and smugglers and coyotes that are in cars operated by cartels up in the United States. We had a car. Uh, in San Antonio and Bernie with nine people in the car. It was being driven by an American citizen employee of the cartel, moving human beings for profit, getting ready to put them in a stash house. That was happening in Bernie, Texas, a suburb of San Antonio. That's the reality. One of the members on the other side of the aisle said you don't use AR-15s for defense. I read into the record a little uh, earlier the exact opposite of that. In Harris County, Texas, a 15-year-old with an AR-15 defended himself and his 12-year-old sister from two home invaders in Houston, Texas. And Texas with an AR took down three drive-by shooters emerging unscathed. The man with an AR defended himself and three others from a gang of seven masked and armed criminals. It just isn't true. We're just stating things that are simply not true. I'd yield back. Gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from uh, Rhode Island seek recognition? Move to strike the last word. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to first say I, I associate myself with your remarks about the amendment. It's, um, it's an absurdity. Uh, there is no official policy of the Democratic Party to defund the police. In fact, just the opposite. We made certain that when we responded to the increase in crime during the pandemic and we passed the American Rescue Plan, we included $350 billion. And we made that money eligible for law enforcement. $350 billion. And you know how many members on the Republican side voted for that? Zero. Zero. They voted against funding for the police. So let's False. stop with that distraction. Simply. Focus the attention on the bill before us, which is the general deal. No. Now, the second thing is, one of my colleagues just said, can you tell me how many people's lives would be saved? If you could just tell me that. Well, fortunately, I have the answer for you. <clears throat> the American Journal of Surgery, in a study by the Journal of Trauma and Acute Care, concluded that 70% less likely that people would be killed if there was the federal assault ban were back in effect, 70%. And so that means if you take eight of the 10 deadliest mass shootings in recent American history that involved an assault weapon, Las Vegas, Nevada, 60 deaths, purchased legally. Pulse nightclub, 49 deaths, purchased an assault weapon legally. Sandy Hook Elementary School, 26 deaths. First Baptist Church in Southern Springs, 25 deaths, purchased legally. Walmart in El Paso, Texas, 23. Purchased legally, 23 deaths. Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, 21 deaths. Purchased legally. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, 17 deaths. Purchased legally. And San Bernardino, California, 14 deaths. So the evidence is overwhelming that this is a weapon of choice in mass shootings. The empirical evidence shows 70% more people would be alive if the assault weapon ban were in place. So that's that answer, Christian. Next, I want to just read to you this notion of Shouldn't the Democrats fight harder for more common sense gun safety legislation? I mean, this is like Alice in Wonderland. Are you kidding me? We have legislation that we've attempted to pass relating to ghost guns, high capacity magazines, straw purchasers, safe storage, raising the age to own an assault weapon. I mean, the list goes on and on. We have Republican opposition to every single piece of legislation. And you have the audacity to say, but there's other gun crimes you should be focused on. Seriously? Seriously? Aren't you ashamed to even say that when you stand I'm up you? and oppose? No. Talking about me. When you stand up and oppose every single one of these efforts 
to bring common sense gun safety to this country. Now, finally, I want to just end with this. You all know Brian Mast. He's a colleague who lost two legs serving our country in the military. And he wrote a piece, I'm a Republican, I appreciate assault weapons, and I support a ban. And this is what he wrote in the New York Times. My rifle was similar to the AR-15 style semi auto weapon used to kill students, teachers, and a coach I knew at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, where I once lived. I have fired tens of thousands of rounds through that rifle, many in combat. We used it because it was the most lethal, the best for killing our enemies. And I know that my community, our schools, and public gathering places are not made safer by any person having access to the best killing tool the Army could put in my hands. I cannot support the primary weapon I used to defend our people being used to kill children I swore to defend. He then goes on to answer the question of, oh, can we really do this? I mean, the Second Amendment, we can't have any limitations. And he writes, the Second Amendment is unimpeachable. It guarantees the right of citizens to defend themselves. I accept, however, that it does not guarantee that every civilian can bear any and all arms. For example, the purchase of fully automatic firearms is largely banned already. And I cannot purchase an AT-4 rocket, grenade, a Bradley fighting vehicle, or an Abrams tank. I know that no single action can prevent a truly determined person from committing mass murder. And I am aware of other ways to commit mass murder, such as bombings and mass vehicle slaughter. But he, and here he adds to so the people who say, well, if you can't get rid of everything, do nothing. And, he, and I quote, Brian Mass says, not being able to control everything, however, should not prevent us from doing something. And so, like, the notion that the Constitution prohibits this is not true. The notion that it won't make a difference is not true. The notion that these weren't created for the military is not true. And so I would ask to introduce into the record the article that says, I'm Republican, I appreciate assault weapons, and I support a ban. I'd ask that be introduced into the record. Without objection. I asked an article entitled, It's Time to Bring Back the Assault Weapon Ban, Gun Violence Experts Say. Without objection. And a copy of the Journal of Trauma and Acute Care Surgery, which reveals that mass shooting fatalities were 70% less likely to occur during the federal assault weapons ban. Without objection. And I yield back. Gentleman yields back. For what purpose does uh, Mr. Isis seek recognition? Move to strike the last word, Mr. Chairman.